So in March of this year, it was reported that the country's biggest power players would be coming together in a 185 billion peso power project in Batangas. These three players are number one, Manny Pangilinan chaired Miraco Power Gen Corp or MGen, Sabin led Avoides Power Corp or AP, and Ramon Ang chaired San Miguel Global Power Holdings Corp or SMGP. Specifically under the deal, MGen and AP will jointly invest in SMGP's two gas-fired power plants. Also, all three companies will nearly fully invest in and acquire the LNG import and regasification terminal from Linseed Field Corporation to supply LNG fuel to the plants. So ultimately, it's a natural gas project. Many parties are rejoicing over the project, saying how it heralds energy security, how it will save us. Now, there's no denying that having this LNG facility will increase our country's energy security and energy independence. There's also no denying that LNG has major environmental benefits compared to traditional fossil fuels, therefore helping to lower greenhouse gas emissions. This is why it's considered an ideal transition fuel to renewable energy and supports the Philippines' aim to cut down greenhouse gas emissions by 70% by 2030. However, I just want to point out that LNG is not perfect. LNG is not a renewable resource. It is a fossil fuel derived from natural gas, which is a non-renewable resource. So while LNG is cleaner and more more efficient than traditional fossil fuels like coal and oil, it is not renewable because it's extracted from finite underground reserves. LNG can be harmful to the environment in several ways. The most obvious one is greenhouse gas emissions. Although LNG burns cleaner than coal or oil, it still emits carbon dioxide when combusted, which contributes to global warming. Methane, which is a potent greenhouse gas, can also be released during the extraction, processing, and transportation of natural gas. Another reason why LNG is not perfect is that it involves energy-intensive Processes. The process of cooling natural gas to a liquid state, which is called liquefaction, and transporting it in refrigerated ships requires significant amounts of energy, which are often generated from fossil fuels, and that adds to its overall carbon footprint. Another reason is methane leakages. During the extraction and transportation of natural gas, methane can leak into the atmosphere. Methane is much more effective at trapping heat compared to carbon dioxide, and therefore is more dangerous to the atmosphere. Another point against LNG is environmental disruption. The extraction of natural Natural gas can lead to habitat destruction, water contamination from fracking or hydraulic fracturing, and other ecological disturbances. Another one is accidental spills and explosions. LNG spills can harm marine environments, and also it's highly flammable, and so it poses risks for explosions when handling and transporting it. So my point is, obviously LNG is not perfect. It should only be a transition fuel, because while it emits fewer pollutants and greenhouse gases than coal and oil, it is essentially still a non-renewable fossil fuel that contributes to climate change. So the bottom line, we should use LNG as a temporary solution. We should use it for what it really is, a transition fuel. We should not use it as a be-all and all. It cannot be that once the LNG facility is up and our energy supply increases, we'll forget about renewable energy. Instead, we should really use LNG to transition to renewables. We shouldn't expect these LNG facilities to supply our country's energy requirements indefinitely or forever or until kingdom come. Instead, while this project is operating, in parallel, we should be working on building bigger renewable energy capacities so that eventually we can completely phase out this LNG project and instead rely fully or at least almost fully on renewables for our country's energy requirements.